Well, the idea that race starts on non-humans to begin with was a surprise to me. Um, I, I, I never a a anticipated that. Um, that you know, the idea of races of corn was a surprise to me. Um, and in each of these cases, it's led me to rethink my basic assumptions and also my approach as an anthropologist. So when um, anthropologists talk about race, we uh, tend to assume two, two things. Um, one, that it, it's about otherness, right? These uh, forms of kind of incomprehensible uh, difference. Uh, and secondly, that when you involve natural objects, um, uh, I mean, it's very commonplace with uh, primates, for instance, that there's a dehumanizing aspect. So with race on people, you will see uh, commonly a kind of simianization, rendering people ape-like, right? So you'll hear this with athletes in sports, you know, when they're de described in animalistic terms. And this is what I thought racial thinking was about. Uh, it, it, from these two sur surprises, I've learned that that's not the case. Actually, instead of otherness, race is used to think about forms of sameness uh, on non-humans, like plants. So um, there's a whole, uh, I call it uh, a botanical hermeneutic, a, a kind of a series of in, in interpretations. Um, and these actually extend back to the, the Bible. So roots, seed, fruit. These are all ways we talk about groups of people, of nations of people, you, you will know them by their fruit, right? the seed of a people, right? Uh, we race, we put down our roots. Well, these are, are not forms of otherness. They're forms of, of parallel or com commonalities that we have with plants. So there is a much more fundamental effort to think about forms of sameness with race rather than difference. As well with dehumanization, it's not the case that we only use race to project animality with um, you know, breeds of dogs or you know, cows, or chickens as well. The idea is, again, that there's a set of parallels between humans and non-humans.